All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Nice to see each of you out here this morning, and we are going to continue on with the lesson we began last week. And so we do have a handout. So if you weren't here last week or maybe didn't keep your handout and would like one, just slip your uh, hand up and Brother Joe will make sure he brings one over. Now, I'm not going to go back through the lesson. There's some fill-ins uh, there for you. So You'll um, either have to guess what those are or go back, maybe watch last week's lesson, or you could ask me or cheat off your neighbor. One of the two. <laughs> One of the four, I guess. I gave you four options. But uh, we have been uh, in a series here in our adult Sunday school class looking uh, at a passage of Scripture. Really, our text is found out of Hebrews chapter number 12, where the I guess the topic of the series is things that we're going to see in heaven and uh, some uh, some amazing things, uh, some amazing things to look forward to. Of course, we have the heavenly Jerusalem to ultimately look forward to. And we had a study on that, what the dimensions of that are like and um, what it's it's constructed of. The Bible does give us some description there. Just amazing, something the mind, our minds cannot understand, comprehend. There are things that God has prepared for us that uh, we just cannot understand. And so um, some certainly some things to look forward to. The passage of Scripture mentions uh, there in Hebrews chapter 12 uh, several things, and we're just going down the list. The second thing was an innumerable company of angels, and so we looked at a, a study of angels. Uh, things that we are going to see in heaven, the general assembly, the church of the firstborn. We talked about uh, what those two groups uh, are, and uh, they're they're saved, they're believers. Um, but there's a distinction there that the Bible gives us between the two groups. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, the book of Hebrews goes on and says, one of the things we're going to see when we get to heaven, of course, we can't see God right now, but we will see God. We see God today through the eyes of faith. The Bible tells us we are going to see God. Now, he is described here as God, the judge of all. God, the judge of all. God is the judge of all. And we began looking at there's, there are four coming judgments that, uh, that have not occurred that are going to be happening. And we began this study last week. And the first judgment, and that is all that we got through, was the judgment of the saved. We looked at this last week, the judgment of the saved. Now, with each of these judgments, each of these four judgments, we're just going to go through and, uh, and keep a very uh, consistent, uh, hopefully easy uh, outline to follow. We're going to look at the time of the judgment, uh, the subject or who is being judged, the basis by which they're going to be judged, and then the outcome or uh, the result of that. And we looked at this last week, and so if you were here and you have your handout, uh, you can see the outline that we covered. Uh, so we're not going to go back through all of that, but uh, I did want to mention, and we're going to look at the last three judgments this morning. So this is the first judgment that is going to happen. This is the judgment of the saved. It's also called the judgment seat of Christ. And when is this judgment going to occur? Well, we looked at some scriptures that tell us the timing of this judgment for those that are saved is going to happen immediately after the rapture. Of course, that is the next event that could happen at any time. It could happen today. The judgment of the saved, the judgment seat of Christ could occur today. We don't know the time or the hour. Only God the Father knows. But as soon as when Jesus comes to the clouds and calls up uh, his children, we'll be with the Lord forever. But then the Bible tells us that the judgment seat uh, of Christ uh, will occur. And so the Bible says we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. All believers uh, will appear before this judgment. So we know from the timing of this, this could happen at any time. It could happen right after the, the right after the rapture happens, and it is a judgment for those that are believers. This is not God judging the whole world. It's a judgment for the saved. And, um, and it's uh, not a judgment of whether or not you're saved. We looked at plenty of scripture there 
Um, we're, we know we are not, uh, um, this is not God weighing our good works versus our bad to say, oh, well, do you have entrance into heaven? No, this is for those that are saved. So if you're standing before God, the judge, at this judgment, he's not determining whether or not you're saved or not. It's a judgment of service. And so service, not salvation. Salvation is not by works. Nothing we can do will ever earn us to heaven. It's only by Jesus Christ. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ, we all would be lost. But this is a judgment of service, and, and it leads to, okay, so our service to God, what, what's the outcome? Well, there are rewards that the Bible talks about that Jesus, who is the judge, will give out rewards being crowns. We spent some time going through the five different crowns that the Bible speaks of and how they are earned, but also kingdom positions, because we know that according to the Bible, the events that are set to occur are that of the rapture, then we know we'll, the judgment seat of Christ will occur. That's a judgment of the saved. But down here on earth, the tribulation period occurs. And at the end of the tribulation period, we know Jesus Christ is going to return with, uh, and uh, those that are with him will return as well. And he will establish an earthly kingdom known as the millennial kingdom. And we know that uh, the Bible talks about that one of these, um, these rewards or uh, one of these rewards are kingdom positions. And so uh, Jesus said he's going to make uh, the ruler over many things, um, ruler over many things. And so power over the nations and he shall rule them. And so the saved that return with Christ, the believers, if uh, they have served the Lord, one of the rewards will be positions of authority during the thousand-year reign. And so, you know, our lack of service, if you're a saved believer today, you know the Lord is your Savior, but perhaps you're not serving Him. You know, your lack of service will never cause a loss of salvation. That's an important point, but uh, the Bible does say there is a loss that occurs, a loss of reward, and how sad it's going to be for those believers that stand before God the judge and have nothing to offer him. And uh, they see the rewards that would have been given to them taken away. And um, I want to be there, and I, I trust all of you want to be there, with something to offer the Lord. And, um, and so this is the first judgment that is going to occur, the judgment of the saved. And I, I, I trust and pray that all of us today uh, will be at this judgment. It's not going to necessarily be a, a pleasant time for those that haven't served the Lord, but uh, nonetheless, it is not a judgment of whether you're saved or lost. It's a judgment on your service. Now, the next judgment that the Word of God uh, gives us, and I uh, want to look at this second judgment that is going to occur. And once again, we're going to look at we're going to look at the the time of the judgment, the um, the the subjects or who is being judged, and the basis of the judgment and the outcome. But this is the judgment of the nations. And if you can uh, turn over to Matthew chapter twenty five, I'll have some of the scripture verses up on the screen for you, but some uh, we're going to just look in in the Bible and read together. But in Matthew chapter 25, verse uh, 31, we'll look here. First of all, the timing of this judgment. When is the judgment of the nations going to occur? Well, this will occur immediately after the return of Christ uh, in glory. So this will happen when Jesus Christ comes and steps foot back on earth. Now, when is that going to happen? Well, at the end of the tribulation. At the end of the tribulation, Jesus is going to return to earth to establish his kingdom here on earth, a perfect kingdom. Matthew 25 and verse uh, uh, 31 tells us this, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, and he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. 
He's going to sit upon the throne uh, there in Jerusalem. Now we know that according to Matthew chapter 24, the previous chapter, as Jesus is speaking here in verse 29, Jesus Christ is going to return to the earth immediately after the tribulation. It's The tribulation is that seven-year period here on earth known as Daniel's 70th week, a terrible time on earth, uh, such as was never happened before. But note, look what Jesus says here in the previous chapter, beginning in verse 29. Jesus said, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Verse 30, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Revelation chapter 19, uh, we won't turn there, but it gives even more details of what it will be like when Jesus returns. We're coming with him. Understand this, when, when we come with the Lord, when Jesus Christ returns, you know, when he first came to earth, it was not spectacular like it's going to be the second time. When he first came, remember, he came as a newborn baby. The world was busy. They didn't recognize his coming. But the passage here in Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 29 says, they're going to see the Son of Man coming this time in the clouds with power and great glory. It will be every eye will see him return. And he is not coming. And Revelation chapter 19 uh, tells us that he is coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. All caps. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming as the righteous judge with eyes as a flame of fire. You can read the passage on your own time there in Revelation. So he's not coming as an innocent little baby. He's coming as the righteous judge. But what he is, we know that this is his second coming to earth. And why or who is he coming to judge? Well, it's a judgment of the nations. He will be judging the nations. Now, these are the nations that have survived the final battle. We know uh, there's, um, there's going to be a battle that takes place, and Jesus Christ is going to win. Now, we're the let's let's read Zechariah the prophet here the prophecy that's talked about here in Zechariah chapter thirteen. Now, when we say the ter or when the Bible uses the term nations here, when when uh, I think oftentimes you and I we think of nations as being a uh, political entities, right? Like we have the nation of we have the United States of America that is a nation, and um, you know the key. The key word nation here, really, it's it has a meaning of peoples, not so much countries. And uh, but the uh, let's read some uh, some scriptures here. We know that during the tribulation period, and we won't go into this because we've already looked at this. There's going to be it's going to be a time uh, such as was never on earth, a time of of uh, death, and uh, most of the people on earth will not survive the tribulation. But there is going to be some, and Zechariah here prophesies, we know that in terms of uh, the nation of Israel, or the, peop the, the Jews, the, the people of the Jews, it says here, the prophecy says here in Zechariah 13, verse 8, and it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So we know that although during the tribulation period, there is going to be another mass extinction of the Jewish people. But not all of them are going to die. The Bible says two-thirds will not make it, but a third will. And verse 9 goes on and says, And I will bring the third part through the fire, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people. And they shall say, the Lord is my God. And so we know that 
Not all of the Jews will make it. Two-thirds are not going to make it, the Jewish people. But when Jesus Christ returns there, uh, we know that uh, there will be a third uh, will turn uh, will will turn their eyes and believe on the Lord. And uh, Zechariah 14, the first verses of, of this chapter, tell us that when Christ, will, he's going to return to the same spot that he left. Now, where did he ascend back up? Well, it was the Mount of Olives. That's where he's going to return. And then in verse 12 of Zechariah chapter 14, it says the Lord is going to smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem and um, and so this is the judgment of the nations. Those that treated the nation of Israel or the pe the Jewish people bad, they turned on them during the tribulation. The Lord's going to smite them. And so this is going to be the basis by which He judges here. Um, and and turn over and hopefully you're there. Matthew chapter twenty five. Matthew chapter twenty five. Um, Jesus uh, tells us of this time that there's going to be a separation at this judgment. When he returns, there's going to be a separation. Similar, uh, And he uses the separation as, a, as the sheep are separated from the goats, starting in verse 31. And uh, this is not, understand, this is not talking about the great white throne judgment. Uh, this is a judgment of the nations, and it what it's deciding here is uh, who gets into his kingdom, uh, the start of the millennial kingdom. And uh, verse 31, it says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him, verse 32, shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep of, on his right hand and the goats on his left hand. Then shall the king say unto them at his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I, I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. And uh, verse 30, naked, and ye clothed me. Um, skipping down, uh, well, they, they uh, skipping down to verse 40. And the king answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of my brethren, ye have done it to me. Oh, that's, he's talking about, well, his brethren there. He's talking about the treatment of the Jews here. And so <clears throat> another passage of Scripture in Joel, of, of the prophet Joel, verse uh, 2 of chapter 3, tells us that the Lord is going to gather all nations and bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. So this is a judgment that is going to occur when Jesus Christ returns to earth. It's going to be judging the nations, those that have made it to the end. Uh, when that occurs, that's at the end of the tribulation. It's a judgment of their treatment of the Jews. And the outcome of this judgment is whether or not they're going to enter the millennial kingdom or go into everlasting fire. Now, some verses here I want to read. Matthew chapter 25. Again, you, sh you should be there. It's also up on the screen. Notice here the king. Or then shall the king say unto them at his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. And this is... This millennial kingdom, again, this is not the judgment seat of Christ, so which we're going to talk about here in a, in, a, in a minute. But this is the thousand-year reign of Christ here on earth, this perfect kingdom the, where Christ rules and reigns from the throne of David there in Jerusalem. But notice, so there's, it's a, there's a separation. The outcome 
is there's going to be some that enter the millennial kingdom. There's going to be some that don't. In verse 41, then shall he say also to them on his left hand, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. And this is the this fire is the fire of hell. So <clears throat> um, there's a, another passage of scripture in Isaiah chapter two. Uh, we don't want to turn there where it talks about in the last days that the Lord, he's going to judge among the nations. And so this judgment of the nations, understand this, it's going to happen at the end of the tribulation period when Christ returns. And there, um, there it's, it's going to be a judgment of who gets to enter the millennial kingdom, who goes to hell into everlasting fire. Now, we know there are going to be some Jews that survive the tribulation. Not many, but a third. And when they see Christ return, they're going to, they're going to, uh, they're going to believe on the Lord. And, uh, and, and then they will enter. So th anyone entering the millennial kingdom at this point, will, they, they will have to be saved individuals, right? They can't be, there will not be lost people entering the millennial kingdom. At the very beginning, and this isn't really the, the, the uh, main point of this lesson, but there's a lot of, we're looking out, um, you know, there, the details of what the Word of God gives. It doesn't give us every, every detail, understand this. But you say, well, I thought during the tribulation period, um, anyone who goes into the tribulation, you know, there it won't be any saved because we know the, at the rapture, all of those that are saved are taken up. So at, during the tribulation, there will be lost people here on earth. Now, will people get saved during the tribulation period? Well, yes, the Bible actually says there will be those. Now, I will say this. It will be those that have never had an opportunity to trust Christ. If they have rejected Christ, they are they will be lost forever. They will not have an opportunity. The Bible says God's going to blind them. But there will be those. Now you say, well, who are those that are going to get saved during the tribulation period and believe and and um and then maybe make it? Uh, we know a lot of people that will have will have an uh that have never had an opportunity to be saved that are saved during the tribulation we know they're going to be executed they're they're not going to make it there's going to be a lot christians are going to be persecuted jews are going to be terribly persecuted during the tribulation so many will be martyrs but there will be the bible does say there will be some that make it to the end, that will make it to this judgment of the nations. And again, this is a judgment of not countries. It's not like the Lord's going to take the United States of America and say, well, uh, were, you, um, were you favorable to the nation of Israel and therefore all of America gets to uh, join in? No, it's not that. Nations is, is people um, here, but there will be some. Plus, you know, there are some. Why do we have worldwide missions? So that people hear the gospel. There are people that have never heard the gospel. They've never had an opportunity to hear the gospel. Now, at the rapture, if they're not saved, they're not, they're not going to be up, uh, uh, go up, be caught up. But they'll stay here on earth, and they will enter the tribulation, and they will be given an opportunity they can trust Christ if they've not rejected uh, before or been given that opportunity. There may be young kids that enter the tribulation that come of age and have an opportunity. And so, needless to say, there will be some that do get saved during the tribulation. And they will realize uh, this judgment is how did they, uh, how did they treat the nation of Israel? there and and saved people will be able to enter the millennial kingdom now that i would love to continue on and say well okay then what goes on from there but we're going to move on to the the third judgment here so we have the judgment of the saved that's the judgment seat of christ we have a judgment that occurs 
when Jesus Christ returns to earth to establish his kingdom. And then the third judgment that is to come is the judgment of the unsaved, also known as, uh, and if you turn over to Revelation chapter 20, Revelation chapter 20, also known as the great white throne judgment. Now, this is a judgment for all of the lost. And first of all, the timing. When does this judgment occur? We know that the judgment of the saved occurs right after the rapture. We don't have to wait. Our works are going to be judged there, but then we know seven years later there will be a judgment of the nations that occurs. That is entrance into the millennial kingdom. And then a thousand years later, at the end of the millennial kingdom, is going to be the judgment of the unsaved or the great white throne judgment. And John writes about this in Revelation 20, and beginning in verse 11, how he saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it, whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, this is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Okay, so the timing of this great white throne judgment is really at the end of time as we know it. Uh, Peter writes this uh, about this time in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3. It says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And he uh, continues on in verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. And so Peter is describing of really the timing of when this world is destroyed, when it's burnt up. And we know that we know the tribulation is going to be a terrible time. There's going to be destruction. But we know after the, the tribulation is the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Christ. And so this earth is, is going to be around for at least a thousand years and a thousand seven years, I suppose, we know. This world's not going away for at least a thousand and seven years, or maybe longer. But we know at the end of the 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 thousand year reign, the world is going to be burnt up. And that's uh and it continues uh here. Let me move the slide to the next verses. So we know that this judgment can't occur before the millennial kingdom. It occurs at the end, after this world is destroyed, where God has all the dead, small and great, stand before him. Hell gives up the dead to stand before God, the judge. Verse 11, seeing then that all these things be dissolved, this world's dissolved, and what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now, he's talking about this the new Jerusalem, which we've already looked at. We know when this world is, is burnt up and gone, at the end of his thousand-year reign, this, this world is going to be destroyed. 
and then God will bring in, will descend. We read the verses, how the new Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem, descends, and there's a new heaven and a new earth, and everything is new. We studied that. That's what Peter is looking, he's saying, well, he's speaking to believers here. We look for the new heaven and the new earth, not this, this old world. He's speaking of this judgment. We know that the judgment of the unsaved will occur at the very end of the millennial reign, the end of time as we know it. And we already know that this is a judgment of the unsaved dead who are in hell. And uh, Romans here talks about how there's a day uh, where every man will, rend will render, God's going to render to every man according to his deeds. And verse 8, it's not up on the screen, but it says, But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. And so this is a judgment that is not for the saved, not for the believers. Uh, we will have already been judged. But this is a, save, is a judgment of the unsaved. And Revelation tells us that the sea and death and hell are going to be given up and judged. And it says they're going to be judged out of the things which were written in the books. And so the books are the basis of the judgment here. And you say, well, okay, the lost, this is, you know, this, this is not, this judgment, again, uh, the lost are going to be, they're going to have their, their, their time before God. And the Bible talks about books being opened up. Now, what are these books that the lost are going to be judged by? Well, we know that one will be the Word of God. John chapter 12 and verse 48, Jesus said, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The Word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. And so the word of God is going to be one of these books that are open, and Jesus said it there. It's going to be uh, Jesus Christ was, was the word. He is the word, and, and um, this is going to be one that judges. Also, there's a book of works. We won't turn there, but Revelation, on your notes, if you have a handout, you'll see some references there that talks about the uh, the book of works and so all the works of 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 the the dead will be revealed all the sin that they committed will be shown there's the book of words G, uh, it says this in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36 but i say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. So every idle word, and so God keeps track of what of what they say. There's also, we could call it a book of excuses. You will have to turn there on your own, but Luke chapter 14, uh, there's a parable that the Lord gives where uh, it, of this great supper where those were called, and uh, there was just excuse after excuse. Someone had bought land. They said, well, I can't come because I just bought some land. And there's another excuse of, well, I just bought five oxen. And um, I think what, uh, the, the other was, uh, I just married a wife. I can't come. The excuses that will be, that will be um, at this judgment, the judgment or the great white throne judgment. Lots of excuses. And then, of course, I suppose the besides of the word of God, but this last book, the book of life, might be the most important book at this judgment because Revelation 20 and verse 15, I just read this. It says, And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There's not going to be an opportunity at this judgment. You see, the people in this judgment will have been in hell and they're going to be 
called up to stand before the Lord. This judgment, remember, occurs at the end of the millennial reign. So people that are in hell today, this is what they have to look forward to. And it, they haven't been judged yet. And if they died in their sins, if they died in their sins, the Bible says they opened their eyes in hell. And they're awaiting the judgment. They're awaiting this great white throne judgment. What a terrible, terrible thing to have to look forward to. There is no hope for them. But this is the third judgment that comes. And what's the, what's the outcome of this judgment? Is it, you know, some chance, some purgatory, some opportunity to get into the new Jerusalem? No, uh, it's everlasting punishment. Jesus taught more about hell than he did on heaven. Why did he do that? Well, he doesn't want people to go to heaven. And in fact, in the book of Mark, he said, you know, if it's better to, <laughs> it's better to uh, tie a millstone around your neck and throw yourself into water than to um, go to hell where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. It's better to cut off your hand if that's what, uh, what takes you to hell. Better to cut it off. Better to cut off your foot than to go to where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Revelation says this. It says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. And so there is no reprieve. I suppose the only reprieve that those in hell have is this judgment. But what kind of reprieve is that, knowing that you're about to be thrown into the lake of fire? So this is not a judgment that uh, anyone would want to be at. This is the judgment of the unsaved. We know when it will occur. It will occur at the end of the, at the thousand-year reign. It hasn't happened yet. Those that have died in their sins, they're in, uh, they're in hell right now, awaiting this judgment. And then a after the end of this judgment, they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Um, but then let's talk uh, very quickly about this last judgment. You say, well, there's a fourth judgment. We've covered the saved. We covered the, the lost, the unsaved. We covered the judgment of the nations. Well, there actually is a judgment of angels. And, um, and we're, uh, we're running out of time. So let me just give you some of these. Now, this judgment of angels, this judgment occurs at the same time as the great white throne judgment, this, this last judgment, it's part of the judgment of the great day. Jude, uh, verse 6, says, And the angels, which kept not the first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. And so God is going to judge angels as well. Now, the timing of this, I mentioned, it's part of the great white throne judgment. So the lost will stand before God. The angels will stand. And uh, those that, and we know there are angels. Uh, we're going to look at this. There are, uh, there are angels that, um, well, Jude tells us that there are angels in hell right now awaiting this judgment. Jude 6. And so, of course, the subjects or who will be judged at this, it's going to be the angels that have sinned. We know that there are some angels being punished right now in hell. Second Peter chapter 2, verse uh, number 4, the Bible says this, For God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now. This is, there's a lot of speculation about this, this verse. And, you know, I, I'm not going to um, pretend to know what, you know, what, okay, what was the sin that these angels um, committed? Uh, we know that, that when Lucifer sinned, he took with him a, a, a third of the angels. But those, those are angels are not in hell right now. We know that they're serving and, uh, Lucifer, Satan, and doing his bidding. 
sins. But God does say that there were some angels that sinned and he cast them down to hell. Um, some have, have speculated that uh, Genesis chapter 6 talks about the sons of God, which uh, can refer to angels, the sons of God. Now, I, I don't know. I haven't really actually studied this uh, that particular passage of Scripture, but some uh, what it talks about, the sons of God took human wives, and we know angels are not to marry nor be given into marriage. So perhaps that's the case. Um, I, I've seen some commentary that says it, it's not talking about angels. So I'm not going to pretend to know what these angels did, but nonetheless, there are angels in hell today that have sinned, that are bound in chains, as the Bible says, chains of darkness reserved unto judgment. So what? how is God going to judge the angels? We know he's going to judge the lost, the unsaved, by books. Now, this is interesting, and I'll just, I'm not going to go into this, but the Bible indicates that we're going to be involved in their judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And so it appears that Christians uh, will have a, a hand at this judgment. And what is the outcome? Well, the outcome is the same as those that have, that have rejected Christ. They've died in their sins. The, they're unsaved. The outcome is the same, everlasting fire. You know what? Why why hell was created? Well, wasn't created for you and I. Wasn't created for the human race. It was prepared for the devil and his angels. And so at this judgment, he's going to say to them that are on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Hell was never a creation, or it was not created for for the, uh, for uh, people to go to, but people have chosen to go there through rejecting Christ. And so, four coming judgments, all right? Understand the timing of them, who's being judged, how they're going to be judged, and then the outcome, we've got the judgment of the saved. That's right after the rapture. We have the judgment of the nations, which is a judgment that's going to occur here on earth when the Lord returns and he judges those that uh, on the basis of how they treated his people, the Jews. And the determining factor is who's going to be entering. The, those that uh, believe on the Lord, they're saved. They will enter the millennial kingdom. And then the others will go to hell. There's the judgment of the unsaved. 1,000 years later at the end of the millennial kingdom. This is the great white throne judgment where the unsaved and the angels will be judged. You know, forecoming judgments. Obviously, uh, we're all going to stand before the Lord. God the judge. We're all going to stand before him. We want to be at that judgment seat of Christ. That first judgment. But I would say... One judgment that really matters, one judgment for you to think about. You say, well, how do I know which where I'm going to stand? Am I going to stand at the judgment of the saved? Am I going to stand at the great white throne judgment? Well, you can get that matter settled. You know, we all are sinners, the Bible says. We all have sinned. The charge is sin. And the verdict is guilty. We've all been found guilty. We all are sinners and come short of the glory of God. And there is a death sentence over all of us. But, you know, that sentence, someone took our place. That's Jesus. And you have to come to that point in your life where you acknowledge that you're a sinner. You believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you make the choice. Do you accept it or reject it? And I hope, I mean, you can see um, my sentence, my judgment that really matters is the day of your salvation. That's what determines where you'll be judged. And so I hope 
each of you, if you're filling out the handbook, you can fill this in. Now, you may not may know the date. I actually, I'm not sure if it was the 7th or the 6th. I went with the 6th. I think it was the 6th. I have it written down somewhere, so. <laughs> but I, I realize uh, there, you, it, it's not important to know the exact date, but you have to know the time. You have to remember a time when you placed your faith and trust in Jesus, admitted you're a sinner, and, and believed on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will save you. So anyway, four coming judgments. Thanks for your attention. Uh, looks like we've got a little bit about um, maybe just 10 minutes before the morning service. So I'm going to go ahead and dismiss you. So you are dismissed.